Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. We're looking at 2.7 calculus methods and we're focusing on the merit questions from the 2016 exam. So let's get straight into question number seven. And we've been given a line, which is a tangent of the function, and we've got the equation over there. We've been asked to use calculus to show. So when they use, say that word show, it means they've given you the answer and you've got to prove it. That the tangent, show, I'm sorry, use calculus to show that the line to the tangent to the curve and that the point where the tangent touches is that coordinate. So basically we're trying to show that the coordinate of where the tangent and that function touch is that particular point. Um, so I'll probably start off with by writing down the equation of the tangent because there's a bit of hidden information in there. And that information is the invisible one sitting in front of the x. And that tangent, we've been told that we've got a gradient of 1. Um, so m is equal to 1 or f dash x is equal to 1. I'll then move into the function itself. So fx is going to be equal to 3x squared minus 2x plus 4. And I would then differentiate that equation. So f dash x is going to be equal to 6x minus 2. I'm now going to substitute the gradient that I know into the gradient function that I've now got. So 1 is going to be equal to 6x minus 2. We're then going to go plus 2 plus 2. So 3 is equal to 6x, divide by 6, divide by 6. x will be equal to 1 half or 0.5. So I'm not really sure which one I'm going to use. They've got decimals in their answers. So maybe decimal, normally stick to fractions, but this time around we've got some decimals. Importantly, that number there does match the 0.5 that we were given. So we've shown the x value. We now must show or find that 3.75, which is the y value. So when we do that, we're going to go back to the original equation, not the gradient function. So we're going to substitute that in to find out y. So if x is equal to 0 0.5, we're going to have 3 times 0 0.5 squared minus 2 times 0 0.5. That's a bad 5 there, but there it is, plus 4. That's going to be 3 quarters minus 1 plus 4. Do forgive me as I switch back to fractions just to sort this out. So that there, 0 0.5 squared is 1 quarter times 3, 3 quarters. Um, and that there is going to be equal to 3.75. And that there confirms the y value. So what we've done here is we've shown the x and the y value. We should probably put y in front of that. Um, and we've got our answer. We are now looking at question number eight. And we're going to start off with having a look. So there's our function, and we've been told it has a minimum turning point when x is equal to 1. What are the coordinates of the maximum? And this makes sense because we're dealing with a cubic, which means there should be a minimum and a maximum, or two turning points. So we're going to start off with by writing down the function that we've been given. So that's 2x cubed plus kx squared plus 5. So that k is what results in the difficulty that we're going to be looking at over here. And um, the information that we're given is all about the turning point. And when we're dealing with the turning point, we know that f dash x is equal to 0. So what this tells us is we've got information to do with the gradient function. We should probably differentiate to have the gradient function. So f dash x is going to be equal to 6x squared plus 2kx. We know the x value and we know f dash x, so we're going to substitute both of them in to find out what k is equal to. So 0 is going to be equal to 6 times 1 squared plus 2k times 1. So 0 is going to be equal to 6 plus 2k. I'm now going to simplify that, so I'm going to go minus 6 minus 6, so negative 6 will be equal to 2k, divide by 2, divide by 2, k will be equal to negative 3. So when we put that into our original equation, so fx is going to be equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5. So we've got the original equation now. In addition to that, we can move on and carry on with the gradient function. So we know f dash x is going to be equal to 6x squared plus 2 times negative 3 times x. So that there is going to be 6x squared minus 6x. So that there is our gradient function. 
Um, and we're still talking about our turning points, so we know that there will be equal to zero. And when I factorize, it's going to be 6x, x minus 1, which means x1 will be equal to zero and x2 will be equal to 1. And that answer I like because that matches the answer that I have. So that there is the minimum, and that means the other point is going to be the maximum that they're talking about. So that there is a minimum, and that's because we were told that by the question, which means this point here will be the maximum. So now that we know x is equal to 0 is where the maximum is, we're going to substitute that into the function that we've got down the bottom, which it has the negative 3 in instead of the k, and that'll give us the y value. So we've got f dash 0, that's going to be 2 times 0 cubed minus 3 times 0 squared plus 5. All the zeros cancel each other out, leaving 5. That means our maximum will be 0, 0,5. We are now looking at question number 9, and we've got the line ax plus b is the tangent to the function at the point 2, 3. Um, so first thing to note, we know that a is going to be the gradient and b is going to be the constant. We need to develop some strategies to go ahead and find out what the gradient and the constant is. So I'll start off with by writing my original function. So y is going to be equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. I'm then going to differentiate that. So y dash will be equal to 4x minus 3. I know, or I already know, about x being equal to 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that into the function to find out what the gradient will be at that particular point. So y dash is going to be equal to 4 times 2 minus 3. And that there is going to be equal to 8 minus 3, which gets us to 5. So that there is the gradient. So that tells us what a is equal to. Once we now, or once we know what a is equal to, we're going to write down our tangent function. So y is equal to ax plus b. And we already know that a is equal to 5. We knew that x was equal to 2 and the other point in the coordinate, which is 3. So y is going to become 3. So that means we know three of the four variables. We can use algebra to find out what the b is going to be. So let's substitute all of those in. So 3 is equal to a, which is 5, times x, which is 2, plus b. So 3 is going to be equal to 10 plus b. We're going to go minus 10 minus 10 b is equal to minus 7. And just like that, we found out our a and our b values for the tangent. That's all we've been asked to do. We haven't been asked to find the equation of the tangent, just been asked to find out the a and the b values. We're now looking at question number 10, and we've been given a function. And for the gradient part of that graph, we know that when x is equal to 1, we're going to have a gradient of 3. Um, so let's drop down all we know, and we've been trying to find a, which is in the original function. Um, so let's drop down our original equation. So if x is going to be equal to 2 minus 4x plus 5x squared plus ax cubed. And at that particular point, we know that x is equal to 1 when f dash x is equal to 3. So we need to differentiate this to find out the gradient function f dash x is going to be equal to negative 4 plus 10 x plus 3 a x squared. I'm going to rearrange this to go x squared x and constant order. So we're going to have 3 a x squared plus 10 x minus 4. Now I'm going to substitute the information I know. So I know f dash x is 3 and I know the x value is 1. So 3 is going to be equal to 3a times 1 squared plus 10 times 1 minus 4. We now only have one letter a. Let's go ahead and simplify and then solve for a. 3 will be equal to 3a, and that's because 1 squared is 1, plus 10 minus 4. 10 minus 4 comes to 6. We're then going to go minus 6 minus 6, so negative 3 is equal to 3a, divide by 3, divide by 3 a is equal to negative 1. And there's our a value, and we've answered question number 10. 
And now looking at question number 11, and this is one of the questions we've been asked to draw the graph, and I've replicated the axes over here just a bit bigger to help me out. So the first thing to note, I've got the gradient function, and I've been asked to draw the original function. So really important, the most common mistake I see is people just getting it in the wrong direction, thinking they have the original function and trying to draw a gradient function, uh, but make sure you understand which way around you are. So first thing to note, this gradient function, uh, so f dash x is a positive parabola. So x squared, if I were to integrate this, fx would end up being some kind of cubic. So that's the first feature we need to be aware of, is going to be a positive cubic. The other bit of information I know comes from the graph itself. We can see when the gradient is equal to zero. So we can see when f dash x is equal to zero, those are our turning points. So we're going to use that information. So we know those turning points happen when x is equal to negative 4. So that was over there. And when x is equal to positive 2. We're going to use these two features to go ahead and draw the graph or the function over here. So firstly, hopefully you remember that a positive cubic starts down the bottom. It goes up, then it goes down then it goes up like that. So that's a positive cubic, and what we know is these turning points need to match um, negative four and positive two. So let's do a better job drawing that. So firstly, let's put in the turning points, and we don't have to be exact, uh, but I'm just gonna say, well, let's say there's a turning point here, and that's in line with negative four, and then let's say we've got maybe a turning point down here, and that's in line with positive two. I'm now basically just going to connect the dots in a rough cubic form. So I'm going to start down the bottom, and I'm up down here. Um, so that quite didn't go to plan. So up there, I'll draw my pen off, and then there you go. And then up over there as well, two arrows. And it's positive because it's going upwards, and it's got the turning points at those two values that we identified. And now up to question number 12, and Meg is riding her motorbike when she passes a fixed point. So a fixed point is normally an indicator, it's probably going to be kinematics, and that's confirmed by reference to a speed and an acceleration. Um, if she was to continue to accelerate at this rate, what is her speed for when she has been riding for 10 seconds past point P? So first thing to note, um, I always write down my kind of flow little diagram. So from the displacement, which is S, I can get to the velocity, and from the velocity, I can get to the acceleration. If I wanted to go in the other direction, I have to integrate. Um, so let's jump down, let's write down. So I know that the acceleration in terms of T is 0 0.6, and that means if I wanted an equation for the velocity, so I'm at the acceleration, I'm going to velocity, I'm going to have to integrate to get that. So that there is going to become 0.6t plus c. Now this plus c is normally quite annoying, but when you're dealing with kinematics, it's often a bit easier, um, and that's because this bit of information here. So we know when she passes the fixed point. So that means no time has passed, because that's the very beginning. We have a velocity that is equal to 5. So we're going to substitute both of them in to figure out what c is. And it's normally pretty much the same. 5 is equal to 0 0.6t. Oh, sorry, 0 0.6 times 0 plus c. c is equal to 5. And almost always in these kinematics questions, that initial velocity becomes the plus c. So we know the velocity is 0 0.6t plus 5. And per the question, we're trying to find out the speed, which is another name for velocity after 10 seconds, so we know that t is going to be equal to 10, so let's substitute that in to find out the velocity at that particular point. So velocity at the 10 second mark, 0 0.6 times 10 plus 5, 0 0.6 times 10 is 6, that's going to be 6 plus 5, that gets us to 11 meters per second minus 1. Um, the units were given to us already in the question, but make sure we don't forget those. So that wraps up the last question from the 2016 Merit stuff. Hopefully you found it useful. Let's keep practicing.